I present the first marshal of today's race, who is about to say those words we've been waiting for all day. Please welcome Carolyn Stone. Gentlemen, start your engines. The drivers, including Ricky Craven, is ready in his Kodiak Chevrolet, despite what happened one week ago at Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama. The sports world held its breath as a multiple car crash unfolded at over 190 miles an hour. Craven's car overturned twice, flew into the catch fence, then overturned again, clearing five cars on the way down the banking. A bruised lung, other bruises, and a compression fracture of the T3 vertebrae will not stop Craven from starting today's event. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Unbelievably, Ricky Craven jumps in the race car. We didn't jump in the car. He climbs in the car very gingerly here at Sears Point Raceway. He will drive a single lap in the car number 41. Now, yesterday, Ricky Craven was not driving the car, and the guy who qualified the car, Ron Hornley, who we'll talk to in a moment, was up playing with his buddies in the truck race at Portland. Who got in the race car to, to test this car with the race engine? How about the seven-time Winston Cup champion, Dale Earnhardt? That's Earnhardt driving the Kodiak Chevy in the final practice session yesterday. Don't say these guys don't care about each other and really want to be a part of Winston Cup racing. And now we're with Ron Hornaday. There's the Earnhardt car back there. Is Earnhardt getting ready to start. And Ron Hornaday, uh, you really were called and asked to be a part of this show, and you agreed to come out here and help. But how about the qualifying effort? Great run for you. Thank you. It takes a, two good teams, my truck team, to have the run we had yesterday at Portland and Ricky Craven's team to do it. And, uh, you know, NASCAR, everybody's been a great help flying me back and forth to both these races. Good opportunity for me here. I'm just going to go out there and run it and try to get Ricky Craven some points. Yeah, congratulations on the win in the truck race yesterday. Uh, hey, your boss, Earnhardt, what about the effort? Letting you drive for Craven, and he gets in the car yesterday, and uh, you may be racing him before the day's over for the win. Well, I hope so, but I'm just here for points for Ricky. Uh, Dale, Teresa, everybody, you know, Mike, everybody was flying me back and forth. It, it was a great weekend so far, and I just want to do them a great job. And uh, just got to thank a lot of people, all my truck team sitting back there at a hotel watching this, getting ready for Monroe, and uh, thanks, guys, again. But um, I don't know what to say. It's a great honor, and I just hope we don't lose a lap and we can get going and get Ricky some points. Hey, Ron, good luck to you. We'll let you go down and get the helmet on. That's Ron Hornaday. Hey, by the way, we're talking about crashes last week, lap 78, Bill Elliott. This crash here is McDonald's Ford coming off turn two at Talladega. Gets airborne, pirouettes on its nose, slams down on the ground. And Elliott, of course, as we all know by now, had broken his left femur, the, the major weight-bearing bone in his left leg. He was taken to Caraway Regional Medical Center, then transferred to Health South Regional Medical Center, where he underwent surgery Monday afternoon. Folks, there were four fragments in the left femur. Dr. Andrews, one of the best orthopedic surgeons in the nation, operated on Bill Elliott Monday afternoon. They put a wire around those fragments. They put a plate with six screws to hold the leg together. And the absolute best news you could hear is that just a little bit ago, we were told that Bill Elliott was released from the hospital and is actually, as we're talking right now, on his way home to Blairsville, Georgia, just outside of Dawsonville. So what an effort for Bill Elliott. By the way, Tommy Kendall will drive that car. Kendall qualified 32nd here today. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Dr. Punch, road course racing used to be a fine art because these drivers would come to a road course and say, hey, go find art because I don't like racing here. Now it's a little bit more like fine wine. Everybody likes a little bit of it now and then. Well, we've got some road course connoisseurs in the top 10, like Terry Labonte, his fourth pole of the season here this week. He's run on two road courses before, victories at two different tracks, but never here at Sears Point. Outside the front row is Ricky Rudd, desperate for a win here. He won the first race here when we raced at Sears Point. Mark Martin has fallen to 14th in points after leading all but eight laps last year here. Maybe this place owes him one. Row three, well, how about this? Five wins this season and eight Winston Cups between them, but just one road course win in a combined 43 stars. Row four features Rusty Wallace, a thrashing road course winner, and Kyle Petty, thirsty for victory. Two guys hoping beer makes a big comeback 
comeback in wine country. Veteran road racer Wally Dollenbach starts 10th. And let's not forget about the 28 car and Ernie Irvin, a two-time winner here. He starts 18th. In the beautiful Sonoma Valley, what's the most popular wine today? I can't get this car to turn. Think about it. For more on that, two-time Winston Cup champion, Ned Jarrett. Thanks, Bill. One thing that all those drivers you mentioned have in common is the fact they know how to take care of their equipment. Road racing perhaps tests more of the parts on a race car than any other type of racing they do. The brakes are very important, certainly here coming into turn seven where I'll be working today and gearing down. They'll be gearing down into second gear coming into this turn. That puts a premium on the clutch and the transmission, and it's awfully easy to over rev an engine as well when they start gearing down. And the chassis of the car takes a beating too. The shock absorbers, everything underneath the car, since they're right hand and left hand turns. There's not much about the car that you can't say that takes a beating on a road course. And those that know how to take care of their cars and still go around here fast are usually the ones that prevail. And it's also pretty tough on the driver. He's got a lot of things to think about too, right, Benny Parsons? Boy, is it ever, Ned. You know, this racetrack has 11 corners. That's 22 spots that a driver has to make a mistake. 11 going in, 11 coming off the turn. Also, some of them will shift uh, probably 14 times, probably average around 10 times per driver per lap. What is that? 32 times per lap these drivers have an opportunity to make a mistake. So when the, when the race is over in victory circle, a driver can pat himself on the back because, trust me, he has done a fantastic job. And I talked about all the spots. I didn't even talk about trying to dodge the 41 other cars on the racetrack. The one guy last year finally at last solved the mystery and pulled into victory lane, didn't he, Bob? Benny, the driver who had the best average finish on road courses, had never won until a year ago. Dale Earnhardt passed Mark Martin with two laps to go and went on to win in his 36th road course start. That put him on a short list of only eight drivers who have won on every type of track. And the win also put him atop the point standings last year. A year later, he's there again with a 77-point edge over Dale Jarrett. Jeff Gordon has slipped to fourth in the point standings. Ricky Craven leads the second five with road course winners Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace also in the second five. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins. Always great to come out here to Sears Point in the beautiful wine country of California for the first of two road course races for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, the second being, of course, at Watkins Glen in August. All but six drivers in the top 25 in points changed positions as a result of last week's race at Talladega. I wouldn't be surprised to see the same thing after this event here today. When we come back to Sears Point, we'll have the starting lineup and then the green flag for today's St. Mark Supermarkets 300. Just cook. Well, when they come around next time, they'll get the green flag. There is drama, however, before the start of the race. More from Dr. Punch. Bob, a moment ago when Mark Martin cranked the Valvoline forward, immediately he knew there was a problem. He began yelling on the radio for Jack Roush to come to the car. Well, Martin said the car was missing. He pulled over in his pits, and they raised the hood and determined that the cylinder, the, the uh, plug wire off the number two cylinder, was off. He was only on seven cylinders. They put the plug wire back on, and he left pit road. Now NASCAR says had he stopped in his pits just for safety to check the steering wheel or a belt, it wouldn't have been considered a pit stop. But when they raised the hood, that's considered a pit stop. Thus, Mark Martin will go from fourth to 44th. He will have to start in the rear. Also, the cars number 41 and 19 of Craven and Dick Trickle starting in the rear by virtue of the driver changes. But the sixth car will start also in the back of the pack. And Mark just ready to the crew a moment ago said, guys, put your thinking caps on. Let's figure out how we can get this back. So the guy who dominated this race last year starts from the rear in 1996. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. The pole sitter, the eighth of his road course career, is Terry Labonte with Rudd on the outside. His eighth start in the front four. Ricky Graven will be on the inside of row two. Starting the car, replaced by Hornaday. The third row, Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt. And uh, Ned, as they head toward you, we see the guys that you normally think of as good road course racers up in the top ten or so. But anything can happen here in the next couple of hours. Well, it really can, Bob. And some of those that qualified pretty far back in the field on Friday 
did a lot of work on their cars, and now they feel pretty comfortable about going into the race today. Even though this is a tough racetrack to pass on, turn seven here is one of the places where they can pass. They can outbreak someone else coming into this turn. That's one way to do it. Or if another car slides a little high, you can get under him. So it's uh, somewhat of a typical type turn, similar to some of the short tracks, if there's a short track that has this a turn that's this flat. They're going to head up through the S's, and that's when they'll come into the view of Benny Parsons, who's down in turn number 11. Now, Benny, I'm reminded that back in 1992, Ernie Irvin had to go to the rear of the field on the first lap, and he came on and won. So although Mark is at a bit of a disadvantage here, he could very easily win. Well, that's exactly right, Bob. We have seen that happen before. Ernie Irvin jumped the flag, if I'm not mistaken, back about 1994. NASCAR black flagged him. He started the rear and did, in fact, win the race. Uh, we saw Dick Trickle will start back in the sixth, somewhere back in the back of the pack. That car was qualified by Ken Peterson. There we see him back in row 18. The car was qualified by Ken Peterson, and Trickle will have to go to the back of the pack. You know, it's interesting, the third row, a whole third row, second row, I should say, went to the rear of the field. That's right. Now you're taking a look at the provisional starters, including Mike Wallace and Dave Marcus, and a couple of Winston West provisionals also have been added to the field, giving us a total of 44 cars. A lot of in-cars working for you. Ken Schrader will be carrying one. Here's the Family Channel Prime Star in-car with Ted Musgrave. Ricky Rudd also has a roof cam available to us. So does Mark Martin. A lot of cars up ahead of him. Kyle Petty has one. Look at this. This is on the front bumper of the car. That ought to be good. And finally, Rusty Wallace will also have a roof cam for us today. They're heading toward the final corner, turn number 11, just ahead of Benny Parsons. Now coming onto the straightaway here, looking for the green flag. And the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 is underway with Terry Labonte leading him up the hill. Ricky Rudd has fallen into second position. A good battle for second, however, as Dale Earnhardt is on the inside. They come up the hill into turns two, three, four, and five, basically two abreast. Now Labonte and Earnhardt are first and second with Rudd running third. Then comes Wallace and Gordon. Everybody looking pretty good here at the start of the race. This is a tough section of the racetrack up through this area. It's unbelievable, Bob, that these guys have been able to get to this point without someone getting banged up or spinning out down the carousel. This is turn six down at probably the toughest corner on the racetrack. This is where Mark Martin was passed by Earnhardt with just two laps to go last year, and they're headed towards mid-year. And as they come into turn seven, they'll gear down and break down coming into this turn. Earnhardt moves up pretty close on Terry Labonte. He looks at the outside. That's not going to work. If he isn't careful, Ricky Rudd will go on the inside, but he can't quite make that move. And they head out of turn seven through the S, as they call it here, at the Sears Point. That's the part of the racetrack as they gather speed downhill, down towards Benny Parsons. There's the two turns eight, nine, and ten. This is turn ten, a right-hander. Well, I'll tell you what, they hope and pray that thing's turned right now. They'll head down towards turn 11, straight towards me. And we see Earnhardt smoking that right front tire as he goes down the corner, dragging the brakes just a little bit. Off the turn, completed the first lap, and Labonte will lead that first lap, though. Terry Labonte is out front by about a car length or two over Dale Earnhardt, the defending champion. Oh, uh, we got Kenny Wallace fun down at turn 11. Also, the eight car is fun of Hutch Strickland, but it looks like both these cars will get going again. Yes, they will. And as you can see, the rear end of the car there, Benny, he had some help because there's damage on the rear end of the 81 machine. Yes, there was. I don't know who ran in the back of it, but pretty substantial damage. We'll see what happens as the cars come down in the corner. And there we see, I guess, the eight cars who got in the back of 81. And he spun, too. And he spun as well. But everybody is okay and underway once again as we turn our attention toward the front of the field. Earnhardt closing in now a little bit on Terry Labonte as they head down. Onto this long straightaway to turn number seven. Hits the brakes for the approach to turn seven. Once again, Ned, Earnhardt takes a very wide approach to that corner. Yes, he does. Wider certainly than Terry Labonte or Ricky Rudd. And it seems to work for him, but it didn't gain him a whole lot as far as distance on the racetrack. I guess it just depends on how you approach that turn and how your car set up for it as we head back down through the S's now. Turns eight, nine. They really get going down through here. In fourth gear.
here with the final drive of a 486 or something, probably 140 miles an hour. As they charge down turn 11, slam on the brakes, and once again, Earnhardt drags that right front as he tries to get by. And Jeff Gordon will take a spot away from Kyle Petty, but Kyle Petty is trying to come back. Let's see. I'm told that Ricky Craven might not run but a couple laps if that's the case. He should be coming in pretty soon. Good side-by-side -side race here between Gordon and Kyle Petty. This is for sixth position as they string out. Petty has the advantage now going up into turn number Still two. There. But Still there. Jeff Gordon, the defending Winston Cup champion, has given him a great battle for that spot. And Ricky Craven is coming in, Jerry. Bob, 35 miles an hour, and it seems awfully slow when the cars are zipping up through turns two, three, and four. He will not lose a lap. That's the Kodiak Chevrolet. Now, 37-year-old Ron Hornaday standing on the wall, has his helmet on. Hornaday, a two-time winner here on road course races uh, at for the Southwest Tour. In fact, Hornaday, six wins last year in the NASCAR Truck Series. He won both events on the road course right here at Cheers Point and also at Heartland Park in Topeka, Kansas. The crowd enjoying this as they watch Ricky Craven come out very gingerly. Craven out of the car. Hornaday jumps in, and they have a spotter telling them exactly where everyone is as they see Craven sit on the wall. They top it off with gas. Drivers now coming in the S's. They're going to have to hustle. They're in turns 8, 9, and headed for turn 10. And the Kodiak Chevy now fires. And Hornaday puts the steering wheel back on, puts it in place, and put away. And Benny the Field is headed toward you. Yeah, Labonte is just now coming in turn 11, so I would think that Hornaday should be able to stay in front of him. There he goes on the racetrack, and now Labonte just now coming through turn 11, chased by Dale Earnhardt, still Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace. So Ron Hornaday will stay on the lead lap. The driver change has been completed. Ricky Craven is out of the car. Hornaday is in. Hornaday, the winner of the truck race in Portland yesterday. Earnhardt giving Labonte a great challenge here. Let's go back down to Jerry Punch, who's with Ricky. Well, Ricky Craven just basically climbed out of the car, and Ricky put the sunglasses on. Ricky, you look a little sore and a little bruised, but that was a heck of a first lap out there. Well... <laughs> Uh, it's hard, you know. Uh, it's hard to crawl out of the race car. We've had a great season. The guy's done a great job. But Ron is uh, so good here, and he's going to do us a great job today. And I'm just thankful that we have him. You know, it's a lot harder to climb out than it would be to stay in. I know Larry Hedrick and all the crew want to think about the future in Charlotte. They know that uh, they give you a few weeks to get all healed inside, get the eyes swelling down, get the get the fracture healed, that, uh, that you'll have a good shot at Charlotte. Well, we just need to be smart. And, uh, again, it, you know, this is uh, this is probably the most diff as difficult as it gets. But Ron's going to do a lot better job than I could do in the car under the circumstances. And as good as he is here, he might be, he might be the best out there anyway. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch him go today. You know, we're going to get the points, and, and uh, the better he does, the better we'll be. An emotional Ricky Craven is the hardest thing he can do as Hornaday comes flashing by and Craven watches his race car go up the hill and turns one and two without him in it. And you can tell the emotion in his voice. He didn't want to get out, but knew he had to. Ricky Craven replaced by Ron Hornaday Jr. We'll be back with more of the St. Mark Supermarket 300. And two. Welcome back to Sears Point International Raceway. It's the Save Mart Supermarkets 300, third and fourth right there. And Rusty Wallace is running in fourth position. Ricky Rudd just ahead of him. Back in fifth spot at the moment is one of the best road course racers in the country. He got a lot of experience in the Trans Am Series as a full-time NASCAR Winston Cup driver, but when he comes to a road course, he is a contender. He started 10th. Now, he picked up two positions because an entire row in front of him moved to the back, but he is up to fifth at the moment. We're talking, of course, about Wally Dallenbach. A couple of other drivers on the move. The 28 car of Ernie Irvin is up to 10th position. He started 18th. There's a look at Wally Dallenbach's road experience. He been a second in the road course races last year. 16th IMSA road course wins and nine Trans Am victories on a road course. Ricky Rudd and 
Rusty Walls are having a pretty good battle there in front of Wally Dolan back. And Jeff Gordon has been able to get by Kyle Canyon to take over the sixth spot. There comes Jeff and Kyle. And for you Mark Martin fans, he's at the back of the field still in 30th position. But remember, he was dead last 44th when we began this thing. So Mark Martin is another one who is moving up. But look at all the distance between the leader of the race and where Mark Martin is. There you see the cars coming up the hill. And here comes Mark Martin. He's right behind John Vincent. Man, a lot of cars, a lot of real estate between Mark Martin and the leader of the race, Terry Levante. As you can see, he is off his pace from last year. He was third in the point standings last year. He was involved in that horrible accident at Talladega last week. And it resulted in a poor finish and dropped him in the point standings. Looks like he's got a little bit of a bruise on the front end of the car, Bob. Nothing that serious, but I'm sure back there he's had to rub somebody a little bit good, Bob. There's Tom Kendall, who is also moving up. He's right behind uh, John Andretti in the 37 car, and that is 22nd and 23rd. So he started 32nd, and he's up to 23rd. Right behind him is Lake Speed. Hornaday came out of the pits after the driver change. He was about 11 seconds in front of Terry Labonte, who's leading the race. Well, that has uh, been reduced a little bit. Labonte is gaining on him a little bit. It's down now to about nine and a half seconds. There is Ernie Irvin, currently up to ninth. Start at 18. who has won twice at this facility, Ernie Irvin. That's Ken Schrader just ahead of him. Yeah, he passed Marlon about two laps ago. Now he's pulled away a little bit. Really getting into this turn seven good. He's getting off of it as well. That Calvin Ford seems to be hooked up. You see how he cuts across those ripple strips just a little bit. Not too much so he doesn't upset the car, but he makes the racetrack as short as he can without upsetting the car. And Benny, they're hitting right towards you there. Yes, they are. There we see the leaders going through turn 11. Rusty Wallace trying his best to get alongside Ricky Rudd. Can't do it. Meanwhile, Labonte's pulled out to a few car length advantage on Dale Earnhardt. This battle here for third and fourth, Rudd, Wallace, and Dollenbach is the best on the racetrack right now. They've been running right together since the drop of the green flag. There's a grand field summary. The numbers in parentheses indicate where they started. It looks like we have a car that uh, spun, although he's moving once again. That's going to be one of the Winston West competitors. It is Larry Gunselman from Sierra Village, California. Looks like that may have been down at the uh, at the bottom of the hill net at turn number six. Yeah, I think that's where he, he spun it out, Bob, if he was able to back it up and get it going again. And no apparent real damage to the car. He's still in the lead lap. The leaders are perhaps about... 12 seconds behind him. There are four Winston West drivers that are uh, competing here today. Scott Gordon, Gaylord, Jeffrey Crow, Larry Gunzelman, and Rich Woodland. Here's a nice little battle as five cars are nose to tail on the racetrack. Lake Speed in the Spam car was the fastest qualifier in yesterday's second round qualifying. Would have started about 20th if he had qualified the first day, or that speed would have been about 20th. And now Kendall breaking hard going into seven. Boy, Ned, they're taking all kinds of lines around you, aren't they? Well, they are, Benny. Some of them are staying low. Some of them are coming in here too fast and getting high. Of course, if you come in high, sometimes you can get a better run off of the corner if your car is working right. But, yeah, we're seeing a diversification as far as approaches to this car. 
For those of you who were not with us during NASCAR today over on ESPN2, where we informed you that Harry Gant is going to come out of retirement to race Bill Elliott's car in the Winston Select. And now Kendall to the inside of John Andretti and picking up the position. Boy, that was a textbook road course pass, wasn't it? Just out break the car going down turn 11. And Andretti trying to push. Kendall flew to the back bumper of that McDonald's Ford, but that was textbook. Although John's a pretty good road racer himself, but he says, let me see if I can pick up anything here. And here comes Mark Martin. He's catching this group of cars now. He has passed a lot of cars. You can see some damage. It looks like there, maybe on the left front. Not too much. It's not bothering anything. It looks like they had a little focus on it. This is turn four. The hard right-hander. We're going downhill. And Steve Grissom is in the pits. And Gilligan's Island, there's a pit area for about five or six cars out in the middle uh, between uh, turn 11. There, we'll take the camera back there. You see the cars going by. There's a 10-second penalty. You see the tire change is completed, but he must sit there for 10 seconds until the NASCAR official releases him. That is his penalty because it's much faster in there as Terry Labonte still leads Dale Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace continues to run in fourth position. We'll be back with more live coverage from Sears Point Raceway in California. We're live for the St. Mark Supermarket 300. Welcome back to Sears Point Raceway near Sonoma, California. Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd continue to have a heck of a battle here for third spot. Hey, Rusty's making a movie, Pete. He's on the inside, down turn 11, and takes the spot away. Rudd will try to come back on the inside. They're coming side by side towards you, Bob. Oh, oh, oh. They are at the line, and they are side. By side, they come up the hill. Looks like Rusty is going to finally be able to pull cleanly ahead of Russ. But a nice little battle between those two drivers there for a while. All of this behind Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt, who are running first and second in Chevrolet's. And then three fours of Ross Rudd and Wally Dallenbach continuing to run in fifth position. Once again, down the hill to turn four. This is turn the leader going through turn five, Lamani. He will go up the rise to turn six. There we see, and Dollenbach now closes up on the back bumper of Ricky Rudd. Up the hill, down to the carousel. Turn six. And let's see what kind of run he can get off the corner. What kind of run can Dollenbach get? He's on the inside of the racetrack. Really hugging it. Ned, they're coming towards you. And he couldn't make a pass there, did he? And we got a spin here in turn seven. Car number 35 has spun around again. He's off the course, but if he can't get, he does have it fired, so he's moving, so we should not see a full course caution. As we see, the leader is here now. Terry Labonte is maintaining that distance over Dale Earnhardt. That was the second time that Gunzelman has spun here in just two or three laps. He spun at the bottom of turn six, and he spun right in front of Ned in turn seven, so Gunzelman is having difficulty with this road course here this afternoon. Wally Dallenbach continuing to close in on Ricky Rudd at the moment, and Jeff Gordon is several car lengths behind Wally Dallenbach. Ricky Rudd was on the pole for this race last year. He finished fourth, and we do have the caution flag waving over Sears Point for the first time this afternoon. We understand there's debris on the race course, and the 38 car of Rich Woodland Jr. has also spun, and the uh, those running up front are passing by him. Tell you what, this is a huge break for Let's see, Mark Martin, a huge break for the 41 car of Ron Hornaday. Also, Steve Grissom, who made a pit stop. Uh, how many more cars had to go to the back of the field? Dick Trickle to let these guys catch up once again. Yeah, it's a huge break for Ron Hornaday because Terry Labonte was closing in on him. We mentioned that he was 11 seconds ahead of the leader when he came out of the pit. That had closed down to less than six seconds, but now he will get the make up a lot of distance with this caution. Now the uh, front runners are still up to speed. They have not gotten the caution yet, although the caution flags are out. 
throughout the uh, course. Each of the corner workers displaying a caution flag, but when they come by, they'll get the one that is waving from the start-finish line, and the pace car will pick up the field then. They're up through the S's once again. As a matter of fact, Ron, the Hornaday is not that far. I guess he backed off when the caution flag was waved, and he just isn't that far in front of Labonte and Dale Earnhardt. There we see him going down the corner. Jimmy oh. Spencer showing a little bit of smoke, Ned, up your way. Yes, there is smoke coming from the Smoke and Joe's car. A lot of smoke. Let me look and see if I can see where it's coming from as it comes through this turn. I don't know. It looks like maybe a rear end smoke or could be a tire smoke, but it looks so more like it's coming from underneath the car. It looks like an oil smoke of some kind, Ned, either yeah. transmission or engine oil. Well, he's got some damage on the right side of that car. Somebody has been into him. Now the uh, front runners have received the caution flag and the pace car coming out onto the racetrack for the first time today. This is because of debris on the racetrack and also a spin by Rich Woodland Jr. It is Terry Labonte followed by Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, and Ricky Rudd. Back at Sears Point, and pit stops are being completed here. We are under our first full course caution of the race. 14 laps have been completed. There is Ron Hornaday, who has brought the Ricky Craven Kodiak Chevy in for a pit stop. Remember, he was at the back of the field and was about to get lapped when this caution came out. He's going to be able to get in now and get some fresh tires and some fuel. And as a matter of competition, as a matter of fact, he's able to put his gloves on. I evidently did not put his gloves on. When he stopped before that time, he was sticking them on. So, this is a very time, well timed pit stop for several reasons. Hornaday moves back out onto the track, going around turn number one. As we indicated earlier, he won the truck race in Portland yesterday. Mike Bliss finished in second position. So, our congratulations to Ron on his victory there. By the way, for those of you who were with us yesterday and watched. Doug McGowan uh, win the Southwest, the Featherlight Southwest Tour race. Well, he had an oversized engine in the car. He is being allowed to keep his race win, but he will be assessed a penalty of $3,500 and will give him last place points instead of winner's points. Oh, Rats, I hate it, don't you? <laughs> that is a tough break, but his engine happen. was just uh, was supposed to be 358, and he had a 362. So the field lined up now under caution here on the racetrack, getting set for a restart. The beautiful hills of Northern California is the setting. Welcome back to Sears Point. Just about to go green once again, coming off our first caution. The true value man of the race for last week's Winston Select 500, Sterling Marlin. True value on behalf of Sterling is donating $1,000 to the Brenner's Children's Hospital. Each year, Sterling hosts a country music concert in his hometown of Columbia, Tennessee to benefit the Mary Maury County Children's Fund. Sterling invites several of his recording artist friends to sing, entertain, and sign autographs. All proceeds used to provide a better Christmas for the kids in need. And Rusty Wallace out. First one off pit road has the lead. Earnhardt is second and Labonte back to third. Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, and Ernie Irvin. And this is the sixth race that Rusty Wallace has led here at Sears Point. I understand that Dave Marcus may be off the pace. He's coming up the hill and not going very fast. No, it doesn't look like he's going very fast. And Scott Gaylord is on uh, pit road as we're watching Marcus go up the hill. They come down, the front runners come down the hill at turn number six. And Ned Jarrett will be able to see them as you watch another Cram Field summary. About a three car length advantage at the moment for Rusty as they head down toward turn seven. Yes, he's uh, building himself a pretty good lead here just on first lap. But here comes Ernie Irvin on the outside of Ricky Rudd trying to make a pass, but I don't think it's going to work for him. Ken Strader now tries to get inside Ernie, but that doesn't work either. They have fresh tires on the cars now, so they were a little brave coming into this turn that time, but nobody made a pass up front. But track position is so very, very important anymore because these cars are so very fast, and they're all fast. It's, they're separated by a tenth of a second, probably the top ten cars. As they charge out in turn 10, turn 11. Ricky Rudd will make it hard right after. Right to the start finish line and Bob Jenkins. Three 
cars, as you can see, have been lapped. All of those are Winston West competitors. And the 16th lap has just been completed here with Rusty Wallace leading Earnhardt, Labonte, Gordon, Rudd, Urban, Schrader, Marlin, and Dahlenbach. Dahlenbach was running up in fifth. Now he's in ninth. This is the shot from the 10th place car of Kyle Petty. He's right behind Wally Dahlenbach. How about that for a shot, PP? I like that shot. There we see Dahlenbach trying to go on the inside of Sterling, outside of Sterling Marlin. We can see the terrain. Now watch as the car goes up the hill. Now back down the hill. What a roller coaster. And a good uh, feeling of the speed they achieve on this course, too, with that team. Oh, Dahlenbach got the left side tires in the grass a little bit during turn six. He's trying to throw a little sand in our camera's face. That's all. <laughs> Watching break coming into turn seven. Dolan back down on the inside of Sterling Marlin and makes the pass. Now we're headed through the S's and we'll see a lot of right and left hand turns. They kind of missed that corner there. Yeah, he went over the rubble strips there in that one corner, but didn't come close to him in the other. This is turn 10 now straight away leading down to the slowest part of the race back turn 11 where bp is and hey, he he's, this. Oh, he's trying he's trying and he might have him they're coming towards you looks like they're side by side bob oh they are side by side again marlin continues to hold them off yep he did so a nice bid there by uh kyle petty but he couldn't pick up the position once again, we go back to this camera mounted in the front bumper of Kyle's Coors machine. But meanwhile, back for the lead. Looked to me like Earnhardt was gaining a little bit. Oh, yeah. He's right there. Up the hill to turn six, down through the carousel. And then it looks like you got a couple of black cars coming right at you just a second. And Earnhardt would certainly like to get in front, lead a lap, get those five bonus Winston Cup points. He couldn't catch Terry Labonte there before to lead, so he thinks maybe he might can catch Rusty. He comes into the turn hard here in turn seven. He gains coming into this turn, but Rusty's getting off the turn to it. So he pulls away just a little bit from Earnhardt as they head through the Essex one more time. Now, we had an early caution period, and, Doc, what I'm wondering is, did that change the pit strategy of anybody down there? Well, Bob, before the race, everyone was talking about what they wanted to do. Most of the crews wanted to make it a two-pit stop race by going 25 laps. That would be lap 25, lap 50, and that would give them 24 laps to the end. Well, I've talked to some of the crews, talked to Terry Labonte's crew. They can only go about 27 laps. They're going to have to make two more stops. Call it lap 39 and lap 64. The same for the two car of Rusty Wallace. But I just talked to Bobby Hutchins, Dale Earnhardt's crew chief, and Bobby said, hey, we can go 30 laps, so we're going to pit on lap 44 and then make it all the way on one more stop. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, there are some similar calculations going on at this end of pit road, but the 2018 for Ernie Urban had a great stop. 21.19 seconds. Four tires used a little tight in the carousel, so they took one round of fight out. Also, four tires and a chassis adjustment for his teammate Dale Jarrett, who was loose getting off the turn. Right now, the 28 car is running sixth, and the 88 car is running 19. off Wally Dolan back at the moment as he looks ahead to Ricky Rudd. And your pylon will show you that that is fifth, sixth, and seventh. And they're coming into the seventh turn here. Rusty still holding that two three-car length lead over Dale Earnhardt. Here in the body, that three-car length behind Earnhardt. And the best race right there is that uh, car of Ricky Rudd, the Tide car, the Ernie Irvin Haviland Ford, and the Hayes Modem Ford of Wally Dollar. Ricky Rudd has five victories on road courses, leading the active drivers, actually tied with Rusty Wallace and Darrell Waltrip, who also have that many on this kind of a racetrack. Oh, and Ernie kind of smokes the front brake there. Oh, 
kind of drug that break just a little bit, but Dombeck could not take advantage of it. I'll tell you one thing. When it comes charging on turn 11, thank God for breaks. Otherwise, they'd be up here on this podium with me. <laughs> food up there yet, Benny? Well, there's all kinds of tents. I'm right beside the Ford tent and the Save Mart, but Bob, you know, last week I missed the race. Yeah, the worst possible news. I couldn't even spell diet. Now I am one. <laughs> about this for a shot, huh? Under Rusty's car. This is the back of Rusty Wallace's Miller Genuine Draft Ford. You see the rear housing going up and back. The sewer thing right on top of the... Well, we moved away from it right now, but we see there's the spring and the shock absorber. That little black thing between the tire and the frame is the chain. That's when they make a pit stop. They jack the car up. That would take the tire, the jerk the tire off the ground. Up on top, the little shiny thing on the very left is the hose that pulls the fluid from the gear up to the radiator. The next little silver thing is a rear sway bar that these cars are all running here on the road course. Look how the whole thing travels as it goes up through the S's. Yes. I told Russ we had this camera and we needed some light, so if he did those rumble strips just right and get the car airborne would really help us out a lot. So. Rusty's last road course win was here at Sears Point back in 1990. Now we can see as he bears the nose of the car as he slams on the brakes down to turn 11. Looks like Earnhardt might have gained the car like two that time. Course can be divided into the technical and the fast part of the course, and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Technical is a lot of S's and corners and so forth. The fast part is uh, just letting it all hang out. We had lap number 19, and Rusty Wallace had a total of 99.8, combining both aspects of the track, and Earnhardt running second at a 100. So they're almost equal. Yeah, they're very, very close. We see only a tenth of a second. Waiting to see where Mark Martin is. Remember, Mark stopped here before the green flag came out. It was considered a pit stop. He went to the back of the field, but now he's up to 14 positions. So Mark is continuing to climb up through the standings, and this is the roof cam on the Valvoline Ford. This caution flag was a huge, huge break for Mark Martin as he drives up towards turn seven and mid -turn. Seventy-four laps will comprise this race. We've completed 20, 54 more to go as Mark Martin rests in 14th position while up front it is Wallace, Earnhardt, Terry Lamonte, Gordon, and Rudd. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch at Sears Point Raceway about an hour north of San Francisco in the beautiful hills of Northern California for the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race. There are those running up front coming by. We focus in on Ernie Urban, and he's picked up a spot since we were last here. Here's how he did it right in front of you, BP. He came down the corner, as I said, heavy braking. Rudd hits the brakes. Ernie Urban hits the brakes just a little bit harder. And while Rudd is out there, unfortunately for him, Wally Dollar back in the 15 car tried to get by, and that saved, that cost both of them a couple of seconds. Yeah, Dollar back not, make, not able to make that pass. Right. He's still behind Ricky, so he remains in the seventh position. Rudd is in sixth. Boy, those things are just beautiful coming down through the edge of that speed. The hard right hander. That charge down that towards turn 11. And there we see run on the brakes. Left foot. On the very top, you see the steering wheel column turn as he goes in the corner. Down shifting. Up. This is turn two. So when he's just lightly on the brakes, Ben, he does it with his left foot, but when he really climbs on, he does, he does it with the uh, right and then heels and toes it, huh? Yes, sir. And he goes down 
the hill. Oh, heavy break. Now catch me another gear, baby. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go up the hill. Accelerate. Let's up shift. There we go. Now to the carousel. Oh, I think. Break, breaks. There we go. Stop this thing. Now then, accelerate it. He's back on the gas, playing with it. All the way to the wide open. And here's traffic for the leaders. Dale Earnhardt has gone to rail. Rusty Wallace coming into turn seven. They ran up on the 35 car through the carousel and had to slow down. Earnhardt took advantage of it, and the other cars have caught up to him, so we have a new leader, Dale Earnhardt. Well, Earnhardt only led two laps last year. The last two, the important two, to take home the victory, and he has gone to the front here this afternoon. He becomes the third leader of the day. Here's how it happened off turn six, Ned. He just took advantage of that slower car that they came up on, Bob, and he was set for it and took off. And so Dale Earnhardt is the leader. Harry Labonte and Rusty Wallace have also been in front, but after starting in fifth spot, now Dale is at the front of the field. Tell you what, we got all kinds of temperature gauges, you know. These cars have oil temperature gauge, water temperature gauge. It's a shame we could put a temperature gauge in Rusty Wallace's head. It'd be about 400 degrees right now. <laughs> he was pulling away from Dale Earnhardt the last couple of laps before they ran up on that traffic, and he had to be feeling good about the Miller Ford. But... Yeah, you're right, Ben. He's probably a little frustrated. Let's see what he can do about getting back up there again. Rusty Wallace is the best among all active drivers in laps led on all road, road courses, 267 before today, and he's led 10 so far today, but looks like he may be closing in on Earnhardt again. Yes, definitely. When he came into turn seven, he moved right up within a car length, and Rusty's getting through this turn so good. Wouldn't surprise me to see him make the pass here if he indeed is able to make the pass. By the way, that car that uh, created all the problem there and allowed Earnhardt to go around was a 35 of Larry Gunselman, one of the Winston West drivers. There are four Winston West drivers in the race today, but Lance Hooper, who did not make it, is still going to maintain the series point standings lead. He got 155 points for showing up and qualifying, and that is going to keep him at the top of the Winston West standings. Here is Ron Hornaday, and he just passed the 14 car of Jeff Crow, and he is the uh, highest ranking among the Winston West competitors. And Benny, I remember him from Winter Heat out in Tucson. Yes, he and his brother Mark. As a matter of fact, Mark had a car here that looked just like that, and Jeff made the race, and Mark did not. And Jerry Punch has a report on Ron Hunterday from the pit area. We saw Ron get off the course a moment ago. I went over and asked Ricky Craven what the problem is, and apparently Ron's having a little problem with the brakes. The brakes are sticking a little bit on the car 41, but even with that, Ron said, I can adapt that. I just won't use them very much. I'll use the shifter a little more, try to maybe the transmission, but I'll use the shifter to slow the car down. And Ron is now back up to speed and passing cars as we speak. He's in 38th position at the moment. Ron Hornaday Jr. subbing for Ricky Craven, who did start the race and completed two laps before coming in. We talked about yesterday in the Southwest Tour race that the heroes of these that they have their idols. Ron Hornaday is all these fellas that raced yesterday. He's their idol because he made it. He's the guy that raced with them for years here on the West Coast, and now he's driving for Dale Earnhardt and today in the Winston Cup race, driving that man's car, Ricky Craven's car. He had an interview with Ricky uh, after he climbed down, an emotional moment for him just to get out of that car, but do it. Hornaday picks up a spot there uh, from Kenny Wallace. Uh, meanwhile, up front, it is still Dale Earnhardt with uh, a comfortable advantage at the moment over Rusty Wallace. What do you mean a comfortable advantage? Well, it's two, car two or three cars. It's pretty comfortable for Earnhardt on a road course. I guess that's better two or three feet, huh? That's right. Here comes Schrader and Marlin. There's Mark Martin in 10th. 
11th place, Kyle Petty, Ted Musgrave, Ward Burton, Brett Bodine, Bobby Labonte, Michael Waltrip, Bobby Hamilton, Cope, Andretti, Burton, Bodine, Jarrett, and Kendall Nemechek. How am I doing? You look pretty good. There's Gunzelman and Robert Presley. And that took us all the way back to 25th position. There's Earnhardt leading after 26 laps of the 74 here at Sears Point Raceway in California. This is the bumper cam on Kyle Petty's car as he goes through the S's. You think this is a roller coaster? Oh, Bobby, we got a pass for the lead. <laughs> now they're coming back for you. You're me to death, Petty. Rusty Wallace is on the inside as they head up on the main straightaway at the line. They're wheel to wheel and side by side. Who will make them? And Earnhardt holds him up. How about that? How in the world? Wait till he gets to turn seven. I'm sorry, Bob. Didn't mean to scare you, but I was excited down here in turn 11. Can I tell him about the uh, Tour DuPont? Get him down here in turn seven. I'm going to tell you that the world of cycling, the Tour DuPont, continues this week on ESPN. Later tonight at 12.30 a.m., you'll see stage five and find out how the largest field in the event since 1991 is coming along, the Tour DuPont. Now, is Rusty going to make another run here, coming down towards seven? Well, I figured he would, uh, Bob. He's going to make a run, but I don't think going to get him. I thought maybe this might be the place that he'd do it. He runs in real tight on him coming into the turn. Earnhardt's a little bit higher. Rusty tries to get a bite on the low side. Doesn't work for him. Earnhardt pulls away and keeps the lead. Okay, when he comes towards me this time is when Rusty Wallace is going to make another tip. He'll try to outbreak him down in this corner, and then he'll try to do something to the start finish line. All right, get ready. This is turn 10. A right hand and now charge down 11. Come on, Rusty. Rusty. He's going to make a liar out of him. He sure is, ain't he? Oh, yeah. Close it up. Now he's going to try on the inside this time. Nah, I didn't work. No. I tell you what, look there. Terry Labonte is yeah. closed up on the back of the While those two have been battling it out for the lead, Labonte has closed it place and Jeff Gordon isn't all that far behind there and fourth <laughs> I'd love to see him go over that curb in there yeah there's a there was a fellow passing a pin around out here the Friday they said make the cover hit the bump <laughs> Bump and get the car airborne. They're taking your pictures up there, and you make the cover of all the races. Oh, and Gunsman spins right in front of me. Again? Yeah, again. The third time today. Larry's having a few problems, but uh, he'll learn. Uh-oh, we have Joe Nemechek in a uh -oh. big way off the course. This is not good. Looked like he tried to uh, get the car going again, but it wouldn't go. And and yeah, a battle for the lead. Man. Yeah, Rusty got up beside him on the outside. Earnhardt was on the inside. He had the advantage coming off the turn. Took the spot away again. Now, I would guess that the caution flag will come out because of Nemechek. So now the yellow Try his best to outbreak Earnhardt, I would guess, at turn 11. There we come through 10, and down 11. Rusty, are you going to do it this time? On the outside. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Rusty may have the lead here on the line. Wow. Wow. Who, I think was, who was it, Bob? I think it was Rusty by a matter. Well, you're standing down there. Yep, Rusty Wallace. They come up to the area where Joe Nemechek's car has uh, gone off course. That's turn two. Now, down by Benny just a few seconds ago. There we see old Larry coming to the corner a little bit too high. He nails up that thing. There we see Mike Wallace go by the Heilig Mars car. There goes the 41, the Kodiak. Steve Grissom, the cartoon character, goes by. 
And there goes Jeremy Mayfield. Meanwhile, up in turn two, there we see Nemechek come in the corner. Uh-oh, gets on the grass. This is bad. Oh, up and over we go. <laughs> A pretty no rough ride up there. there. Yeah. And so the Burger King car is smashed against the tires up in turn number two, bringing out our second full-course caution of the afternoon here at Sears Point Raceway. Welcome back to Sears Point Raceway. Pit stops under caution brought out by Joe Nemechek as he got in the tire wall. Right now, Rusty Wallace, the race leader, leads the field at 35 miles an hour down this long and windy pit road. It's Wallace, Earnhardt, then the five, the 24, and now Ernie Irvin makes the left and dives into his pits, and the Texaco Haviland Ford crew goes to work. They go around to the right side first. They will need to make one more stop. You might see a little scramble here and just take two right side tires. The 28 is not one of them. They'll make a four tire change. Other cars get down here, include his teammate, the 88, and the 43 right behind him. Right now, Dale Earnhardt is off the road, and Jerry Punch is there. Hitting right in front of Rusty Wallace. They have already put right side tires on the good right Chevrolet. They will go down one pound on all four tires. Rusty is down the way, four tires. Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, Dale Earnhardt, and Ernie Irvin in that order as they head back to the racetrack. Bob? Boy, the uh, traffic jam trying yeah, to get out of the pit. Sure was. There were some close calls down there, but everybody uh, managed to get out without running into each other, so no damage. Ron Hornaday is completing his pit stop. Left side tires going on, and now he gets the signal to go back out onto the racetrack. He was running in 31st position when the caution came out. And again, the caution is because Joe Nemechek has put his car into the tire barrier up at turn number two. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 in a moment. Or a lot later. 31 laps completed under caution here at Sears Point. Dr. Jerry Punch. We told you a moment ago, Dale Earnhardt actually had his crew go down one pound on all four tires. And the reason for that is exactly what Ned Jarrett was talking about earlier. Up in turn seven, the 180-degree uh, about face uh, before you come down the edges, the car would not turn. After a few laps, you get buildup in the tires. So pressure was going up nine pounds in the front and seven pounds in the rear, and the car would get loose. So he had to take a wide line through turn seven. And that's where Rusty Wallace and others had their shot at him. Maybe with the pressure decreased, Earnhardt can stay with them maybe on a little closer inside arc out of turn seven and down through the essence. Here's an auto zone off-track interval report. Gordon was three seconds faster in the pits and because of that air that they took out of Earnhardt's tires it slowed him down a little bit. At the front of the field ladies and gentlemen is Dave Marcus, and this is the first lap that he has ever led here at Sears Point. He led under caution, but now, as you can see, he loses it to Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and the others. For Jeff Gordon, moving up into second as a result of that good pit stop. He hasn't led yet today, but he would like to. We'll see how strong his Chevrolet is against the Ford to Rusty Wallace. Robert Presley with a problem remains in the pits. Bill is there. We saw it happen yesterday, it happened today. Robert Presley has a broken shifter. They're gonna try and do it with a pair of vice grips. So keep your eye on the 33 car. They've had a rough weekend. He wrecked his primary car here on Friday. Now he has a broken shifter and they're gonna try and put in a pair of vice grips to drive this place. How about that, Benny? Man, I don't think I'd like to try that. We'll see Rusty Wallace down in the corner towards you, Ned, and Labonte for position. Labonte on the inside of his teammate, Jeff Gordon, but can't make the pass. It's hard to get traction when you're very low on this track, on this turn coming off here. And as they head down through the S's, looking back from Ken Slater's car, the Bud Chevrolet on the tie forward to Ricky Rudd. Looks like he and Ricky Rudd are side by side just a moment ago. There we see the, from the camera on top of Ricky Rudd's car as he looks at Ken Slater as they charge through turn 10 and down towards turn 11. They are running 7th and 8th. Schrader is 7th and Rudd is 8th. Here they come single file except for Mark Martin who got to the inside there in turn number 11. And there we see Mark Martin coming off the corners. He chases Dahlenbach and, and was run side by side with Schrader. 
Martin was uh, side by side there with uh, Dahlen back. Now Earnhardt looks like he is uh, ready to make a move. Bob, did you say that Earnhardt's pit stop was three seconds slow because they changed the air pressure in the tires? Yeah. What a dumb mistake I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> they do. They change the air pressure in the tires beforehand, Bob. Oh. Oh. Blame it on that produ producer. I just. Uh, you repeated what he said. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which even proves more ignorance on my behalf. Exactly. <laughs> Four car of uh, Tom Kendall got off the track momentarily. He's okay now. He is, however, back in, let's see, 28th position. Oh, well, there's some smoke coming out of the back of that car. Yep. There is smoke coming out of it, and he didn't have a very good pit stop. I'm sure they did some extra work on his car. The leaders come through uh, turn seven here. Kenny Wallace right on the back bumper of the 94 car. He's off the pace, isn't he, man? Well, he has he slowed down, uh, yeah, let those cars get away from him a little bit. He's still running right there with them, but he's not, uh, yeah, he definitely is not up to, to racing speed, Benny. Uh, too bad for Tommy Kendall. By the way, the seven car of Jeff Bodine spent many laps behind the wall, uh, actually just three laps uh, for a transmission problem. However, he is back out on the racetrack. 44 cars still running. Here's a Franfield summary, and Martin and Schrader are side by side for ninth position. Here they come up the hill. This is where Martin ought to be able to get him. Yep, he got him. And look at Ted Musgrave. He's right there knocking on Schrader's door also. Musgrave trying to take advantage, but could not. And Schrader lost three, pos three positions here in the last little bit. As we see the slower car of Robert Presley going to the inside and letting those fellas go by. That shot there will give you an idea of the terrain. Here they're going downhill. Turn number six. Man, we got a battle going there, don't we? We sure do. What's that for third, fourth, fifth, sixth? Third on back. Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon have pulled away a little bit from the third place car of Terry Levine. Now Earnhardt working on him and, Earn and Ernie Irvin working on Earnhardt. Then there's Sterling Marlin in car number four, Ricky Rudd in number 10, and Wally Dolan back in number 15. Sterling Marlin's having a good race, isn't he? He is having a great race. This is his 350th NASCAR Winston Cup start. They've moved from 12 to 5th. They told me that Rusty Wallace uh, took kind of good Sterling under his wing out here this weekend and helped him out a great deal, talking about him in, in philosophy about how to drive the car, also about springs and shocks and setup. His best finish was in 1990. He finished 6th. He was 7th last year. Currently running in 6th position, so he's doing his best performance. We are nearing the halfway point in a couple of more laps. We'll reach lap number 37 and the halfway point of our 74-lap event. As we watch this, I'll tell you that Robert Preston is back in the pits again. And Jeff Bodine, I don't, did we mention that Jeff Bodine has been behind the wall for several laps repairing a transmission on his car? Yes, yeah. sir. I mentioned that. Kendall is in, Bill is there. Well, they go around to the right side first. They were going to stay out, then they radioed out to Tommy, and he came on in. So they're going to change right side tires. The damage is to the front left as well. They're trying to pull the sheet metal away. Now they're going to change the left side tires. He's obviously uh, been some, doing some agriculture work here because he's got uh, dirt and grass all over the car. Very disappointing for this crew. He was fifth fastest in the first round of practice here on Friday. Now they're struck. Tommy Kendall returns to the race. Loses very precious ground on the track. I tell you what, that windshield, man, oh, man. And those things streak, don't they, when they try to clean them off? And meanwhile, he will stay on the lead lap, it looks like. Is he a lap down yet, Bob Kendall? Uh, no, he's on the lead lap. All right, good. He was the 90 and 95 Trans Am champion, by the way. Has 12 career Trans Am wins. Back in 32nd position at the moment. Watching those up front move through turn number 10 down toward turn number 11. Once again, there is Dale Earnhardt. Ernie Irvin, who are running in fourth and fifth position. Our salute to Bill Elliott, injured last week at Talladega. Bill, get that broken leg 
fix quickly and get back out here to the racetrack. We miss you. We'll be right back. We're on to our third full course caution of the afternoon. Derek Cope's car ran off the track. Now, Benny, there was some uh, contact between Kyle Petty and Derek up your way a while ago. All right, they're coming in turn two. Derek, Michael Waltrip, and Derek Cope both were able to get by Kyle Petty. And Derek Cope thinks he has Kyle cleared. As he comes off the corner, he turns over and Kyle Petty hits him in the left rear and turns it nose first in the wall. And folks, you just gotta watch this from the in-car camera of Kyle Petty. It is unbelievable. There he's on the outside. You see Ob Cope and the 21 car. Cope is, runs in the back of the 21 to try to get him going. Now he comes off the corner, thinks. How's that for a shot? How about that? And both the cars, both Cope and Kyle Petty, made contact with the retain wall. Kyle Petty has damage on the Coors Light Pontiac. Now, Cope ran up the hill, turn number two, and ran off the course, and that really is the reason that we have the full course caution. He did obviously get going again, but the pace car leaves the field at the moment at the halfway point. We have completed 37 of 74. It's Rusty up front. It's the St. Mart Supermarkets 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Sears Point Raceway near Sonoma, California. We are under caution just past the halfway mark because of an incident involving Kyle Petty and Derry Cope. Here it is again from the bumper cam. Turn 11 as they come off the corner. Cope thinks he has Kyle cleared, and obviously he did not. They made contact, and Kyle Petty is in the pits. By the way, and Jerry Punch is there. Well, they're trying to pull some of the right front fender back away from the right front tire. See, the grill has been mashed in the front part of the Pontiac Grand Prix. Grilling has been pulled away. They will go ahead and change all four tires. Kyle, the only car pitting under this caution. And obviously, he had the pit because of the debris and damage in the front of his car. Let's check in down at Bill Weber, where one car, I think, has been behind the wall. Bill? Well, Jerry Ernie Urban back in the garage area only had a little bit of third gear left, so the transmission is gone. They brought the Haviland Ford back here. They're going to try and change it to send it back out. These guys are having a great day. They had two pit stops in the 21 second range, but now they're behind the wall. They're going to change it, try and send it back out. But these guys are really crushed. Ernie still sits in the car. Window net still up. Like a few up. It is too bad. He had a good run going. Hope he can get back in the race and uh, get a few more positions. Let's take a look at the Bush race recap since we are just past the halfway point here. Rusty Wallace, the leader, has led 16 of the 37 laps, and uh, that is the most of any driver so far. Five lead changes, three cautions for five laps. Average speed, 79 and a half miles an hour. There have been four leaders so far. Wallace, Labonte, Earnhardt, and Marcus. We do not have anybody out of the race. All 44 cars are still running. We'll take another break and be right back in just a moment. Just taking the green flag. Cars move up the hill through turns two, three, and four. Rusty Wallace at the front of the field once again with Jeff Gordon running second. Then Terry Labonte, Bernhardt, Marlon, Rudd, and Dahlen back. And the $10,000 for leading at the halfway point has gone to Jeff Gordon. Uh, Rusty Wallace not eligible for that award. And so $10,000 to Jeff Gordon, who is in second position at the halfway point. running nose to tail right now. Bobby Labonte is up there, I think, in 11th place right now. Just having a great run. Had some good pit stops. As we'll take a look at the field from the summary, but Bobby started back in the 21st position, I think it was. And here is Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt racing off the turn, but Earnhardt keeps the position. Mark Martin has got Wally Dollin back. Started dead last in Mark Martin. Had to raise the hood, put a spark plug wire on at the very beginning before the race actually started. Had to start at the rear and has worked his way up into the top ten. As he charges down towards turn 11. Let's see if he can outbreak Wally Dollin back. He's going to give it a shot. Oh! oh.
excellent Texaco Haviland Ford sits back here in the garage area. Ernie Irvin, I know you're disappointed. Your crew's crushed. You had a great run going here. Well, we did, but that's, you know, all part of road racing. You know, uh, you, you have to drive it awful hard. And, um, evidently, we broke the transmission. Um, you know, it's a, it's a wonder they last this long. Course conditions out there? Oh, the track's breaking up pretty bad. It's uh, pretty slippery, but um, it's the same for everybody. Okay, that's Ernie Irvin, and a few other teams are complaining about uh, the track coming up in some spots, too, guys. Okay. Boy, that could be something now. Oh, no kidding. Rusty stretching it out here a little bit over Jeff Gordon. Yes, he is stretching it out. Bob, he has a great line through this turn. This is one of the turns where we see a little bit of the asphalt coming up, and he's making it very slippery here, but... Everybody has been able to negotiate it pretty well. As Ernie Irvin says, it's the same for everybody. So they just try to get through here as gingerly as they can. There's not a lot of the gravel. Uh, we've just seen some of this kicked up from the inside of the racetrack. It's not a hot day here. As a matter of fact, the breeze is pretty cool, but the sun is beaming down. That could play part of some of the racing surface coming up. Once again, they come down to turn 11. Downshift, hit those brakes hard. Trying to find the we see Donovan back on the inside of Rudd trying to take the spot away. They come off the corner. It looks like side by side for you, Bob. Yep, they're going for sixth position, and nope, Ricky holds him off for the moment. Back of me have lost a little bit of ground there as now Mark Martin is right up on the back bumper of Wally Dolan back. Here's the view. of points and the only driver to lead both road course races in 1995 mark martin and we can see the terrain change that we go these drivers go through there's up the hill now back down the hill through the carousel turn six and hugging that inside right on that yellow line now accelerate up to turn seven where rusty wallace continues to stretch his lead a little bit now Terry Labonte has moved up on his teammate Jeff Gordon. Earnhardt still running fourth. Sterling Marlin is fifth. Then Rudd is sixth. And here is Michael Waltrip and John Andretti having a battle. That's 14th and 15th. Michael Waltrip who had such a great run last weekend at Talladega. Started 14th. John Andretti in the 37 car is Jeff Burton in car number 99. There he is. Burton running 16th. And that time, Dolan back was able to get by Ricky Rudd as they came through 11. Never see Bobby Labonte. And Brett Bodine got a great run going in the Lowe's Home Improvement car. Yeah, one of his better runs of the year. Off that team from Junior Johnson earlier in the year, or last winter, as a matter of fact, and uh, struggled a little bit, but having a great run here today. There's a good view of uh, your favorite driver and to see where he's running on the racetrack. There's Jeremy Mayfield running 32nd. Here comes Dick Trickle. Kyle Petty, we documented his problem. He collided with uh, Derek Cope, had to go to the pits. Here comes Dave Marcus, and there is Gunselman again. And Bobby Hillen just pulled the Jasper engine forward in the garage area, either gear or transmission, out of that car. I know what he was thinking when he went by here. <laughs> you can smell it, huh? I can smell it, yeah. Still Sterling Marlin trying to get around Dale Earnhardt, but hasn't been able to do it. Earnhardt goes on to fourth. Spin. Michael and Waltrip is off the track. Right here in front of me, Bob. He came in here just a little bit too hard, locked the brakes down, and he's spun out. He's lost a lot of position. He gets going again, but boy, Michael was up there in great shape, and now he has a lot of confidence. He's going to get back up there. No damage done, I don't think. He was 14th. He drops back to 33rd. All those cars went around him as he was sitting there off the racetrack at turn seven. Right in front of you, Ned. Yeah, he just came in there, and, and you can see the rear wheels were locked when he slid off the pavement there. But he didn't go too deep up into the sand. That slows him down, and you can see it too much damage to the signal forward. Last 
week at Talladega. His best finish of 1996, he finished fifth. His best finish here was in 1990 when he came home ninth. by the famous Woodrow behind the wheel of that car for the first time in 1996. Let's just watch him up through the uh, corners here. Two, three, and four. Back and forth and up the hill and down the hill in this area. Let's see how he is. Uh, there. Yeah, he didn't fly like a kite, though. No. Down the hill to turn four. Now he'll charge down on down the hill to turn five. Oh, man. So much room to make up, Ned. Yeah, the leaders just went through turn seven here, Benny, so he has a lot of room to make up. It's Rusty Wallace leading. Jeff Gordon second. Terry Levante third. Dale Earnhardt fourth. And Sterling Marlin fifth with 43 laps completed at Sears Point. Pierce Point from eighth place, Mark Martin's car. You look ahead to the other competitors ahead of him, Ricky Rudd just ahead. Well, the quest for the Stanley Cup unfolds live on ESPN and the Deuce. Monday at 8.30, it's the Avalanche and the Blackhawks in game number three. Tuesday, the Penguins and the Rangers, both of those games on ESPN, and then also Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern time, the Flyers and the Panthers. So team in the Stanley Cup playoffs here on ESPN and ESPN 2. Well, from Mark Martin, we go to his teammate, Ted Musgrave, who is running in 10th place, and a heck of a good run here for Ted. His best uh, finish here at Sears Point has been a 6th in 95. And we'll see how many times he can shift around this racetrack. So far, he's going pretty good distance in third gear. Now he goes down to second gear. He's not going to stand second long. Third. Up the hill. He'll probably go through the carousel in third gear. Does he shift to second to go up to seven? No, he does not. Keeps it in third gear. Then he's got his hat there on the shifter, so that when he wins, the victory lane, he can put it on right away. Yeah, he's ready. Okay, now, second gear. Hey, short shift. He went from fourth to second. A lot of guys go fourth, third, and then second. Got Bobby Labonte right on his bumper. Jammed up in third gear. Do the S's. Somewhere in here, he's going to reach down and catch fourth, so he gets straight now. You're in game up. Okay, now. Let go of the steering wheel long enough to catch a gear. Fourth gear. You saw what they do with the hands. Let's watch what they do with the feet. As Ricky Rudd's down in turn 11. Accelerates off the corner. Second gear now is Chip. Tip again. Oh, I gotta slow down. Going up that hill. Second position. This is the guy that's leading the race, Rusty Wallace. Pretty good advantage over Jeff. Yeah, he's uh, just moving away. And there's Wallace Dollaback has gotten around Dale Earnhardt and has moved up into the fourth position. So Dollaback showing his road racing experience. Boy, this would be a good place for Dollaback to have a good run. His sponsor, Hayes Moto, a tremendous amount of folks here cheering Dollaback on this weekend. He's on pace with his best finish here. He was fourth in 1994 and has just passed four fourth position after starting 10. This race last year, he finished 39th.
goes up that hill in chase of Terry Labonte. Dale Earnhardt, who is right behind him, has been in seven races here and six finishes in the first seven. Bill Weber has a report on a car having a problem. Well, Bob, wacky things happen at these road course races. As we said on NASCAR today, everything's a little different here. Well, Bobby Hamilton lost precious track position in several spots because his drinking water bottle came loose and he had to snap it back into position. And that's hard to do here when you're turning left and right. So certainly not funny to him, but uh, one of those weird things that happens when you go to a road course. And that car is showing a little bit different paint scheme than what we've seen the past few races. Of course, they're uh, using several different paint schemes this year in honor of uh, Petty's 25th anniversary with STP. They're using all the paint jobs that Richard Petty has had for the past 25 years, and there's one we're all familiar with, nothing but blue. Petty blue. Here's more one from Jerry Punch. Bob, when Richard Petty signed the STP deal back in 1972, they signed it right before going to Riverside, California. They didn't have time to repaint the car to put the STP red on it, so they took a blue car and just put STP decals. Well, the story goes that Petty went to Riverside and won the first race he ever drove in for STP with a car painted exactly like you see it here. So in honor of their 25th anniversary for both road course races, it'll be purely Petty Blue with STP decals. Quite appropriate, I must say. Bobby had his best finish here at Sears Point. Last year, he was 14. There's a very nice overhead perspective of this uh, facility here. Looks like some of the freeways out here in, uh, <laughs> around San Francisco where the cars, some of them going one way and some going the other way. That's turn 11. There where Benny is. This is the front straightaway. There's where Bob is on top of that building. Yep, hello everybody. There's the uh, start finish line. Now they're, there's turn 1A and 1, and up the hill they come. Quite an elevation change from down there at the start finish line to up here in turns 2, 3, and 4. There you can see on the right the cars coming down the hill. And as you can see, the fans have all kind of viewing areas here on this racetrack. Yeah, it, it isn't like some of the road courses when you only see the cars go by uh, every minute and a half and you only get a slight glimpse of them. There are areas here you can go and see about three-fourths of the racetrack. And there's the carousel we see. And we see Jeff Gordon is pulling away from Terry Labonte. And it looks like he might be gaining on Rusty Wallace just a little bit last time he came by here, Ben. Wow. Well, Rusty comes charging down in the corner. Here comes Gordon charging down the corner. Looks like about 10 or 15 car lengths. Mark Martin trying to make a bid on Sterling Marlin back there in sixth and seventh. and Kendall. And behind 
Ron Horn today in the 41 car. We have a Winston West car, the yellow one there, and then comes Dale Jarrett, the driver who is second in points, 77 behind Dale Earnhardt. Jarrett is running in 20th position at the moment. And John Andretti just made a pit stop. This is probably a scheduled pit stop, changing four tires if the caution flag should come out and all the other guys dive in the pits. Andretti will not bend and stay in front. Good strategy by Tim Brewer and the crew. I agree with you, Benny. I think that's great strategy when you get within the pit window. Now let's go down to the pits and Jerry Punch. Hey, Benny, they don't even need a caution. Everyone else has to go ahead and pit whether they get a caution or not. So Andretti did what they call short pitting. He came in early, topped his tank up. He won't have to stop again, so everyone else will have to stop. So he should be the leader. He'll be able to stay out there. And it'll be their job to catch him in the final lap after the leaders have to pit. An experienced road racer, not necessarily in stock cars, but a lot of laps in an Indy car in a road course. John Andretti makes a pit stop. We'll be right back. Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California. Drama unfolding. Just a moment ago, the three, the five, a number of cars pitting. That's Earnhardt and Terry Labonte. And now here comes Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon down pit road. What should be their final scheduled pit stop. Brunel waiting for the Rusty Wallace. Miller genuine draft for Thunderbird. Right side tires. They scrub the windshield. A little further up pit road behind Rusty is the 24 car. There you see the left side of your screen. There's a 10 car pitting the tie for Thunderbird. Ricky Rudd. They have a little trouble with the right front. Now clean some of the debris off the grill of the former winner. 24 is down. He will beat Rusty Wallace back on the racetrack. It's 24, 5, or 2, and then 10. And Terry Labonte, we saw him go flashing by. I don't know where he's going to end up with the... Never seen Ricky Rudd going back on the racetrack. Here comes Rudd back out on the track. Ken Schrader also going back into competition after a pit stop. Track position, very, very important, and therefore who wins the battle off pit road is very important in the closing laps of this race. While we're in break, Terry Labonte and Dale Earnhardt pitted, and Labonte beat the Earnhardt crew out of the pits. He was in front. There we see the 24 and the 2. Now, where is the five? Is he in front or behind the net? Is he up there by you? Hasn't come into sight. Yeah, here comes the 24 car. He is in front of the two car, of course. And then the five car of Terry Labonte is back behind them. And Mark Martin will be shown behind them, so he should be in fourth place once all the others have made pit stops. At the moment, we believe that Rick Mast is the leader of the race, but of course, he will need a pit stop before long, and when all shakes out, this will become the battle for the lead. First, second, and third right here when the pit stops are completed. There's Terry Labonte. And oh. Rusty just got off the track. How about that? You don't see that very often. And man, that's a very, very fast part of the racetrack, probably 120 miles an hour. You definitely don't want to lose control there. That could ruin your whole day. Let's take a look at what happened. Man, he is completely on the dirt. All four tires. Man, oh man. You do a great job of taking Sure did. I agree with that wholeheartedly, Ned. Well, I tell you what, you know that Jeff Gordon wants to stay in front. Let's see the off-track time. Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace. Two seconds faster than Rusty Wallace, and he came out in front of him. But you know a victory here would be so special for Jeff Gordon because the first 12, 13 years of his life, he lived about 10 miles from this speedway, Vallejo, California. Yeah, I talked to his uh, stepfather, John Pickford, yesterday, and uh, he said it was about 12 miles up the road that Jeff grew up. Now, here is the current leader of the race, Tom Pendle. He is off sequence, hasn't made a pit stop. He last pitted on lap 35. It's lap 53 right now, so he'll need one before long. And he's not really too far ahead of the leaders. I mean, the, those that are running second, those that have made pit stops, Bob. But he will have to make another pit stop. But Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace are not too far. I didn't put the watch on, but I would say about uh, six or seven seconds behind him. Jeff Gordon. 
drives down in the corner on the inside of Robert Presley. In turn 11, and just for you Bill Elliott fans, I will tell you that uh, I will tell you that he was released from the hospital today, according to Jerry Clutch on NASCAR today, and he's on his way home. Now let's watch Rusty Wallace as he goes through turn 10. This is 9A, back to turn 10, and he's supposed to go keep turning to the right. Uh-oh! You believe in that, folks? On the dirt, and he's safe. Wow. Then it is the car that's having problems heading towards you is Mike Wallace in the car number 90. He went off turn 7 here and got off on the dirt a little bit, but there was smoke coming from that car, too, so I don't know what his problem might be. There he is. It looks like he is slow. Yeah. And smoky. Now, we talked about making up positions in the pits and on the racetrack. Well, Wally Dallenbach's having a great day on the track. But listen to his pit stop times. First one, 26 seconds, 24 seconds, and 23.91. So what he's gaining on the track, he's losing on pit road. Now, I didn't get Bobby Labonte's third stop, but his first two were 17.70 and then a 19 flat. He picked up four spots on pit road with his first stop and two or three spots with his second stop. So you can see you've got to be good on the track and in the pits because the position you lose here on a road course, you just you can't make it up. No, it's just too difficult. Now we see Dolan back is in front of Ricky Rudd. He's currently in seventh spot. Rudd is in eighth, straighter ninth than the 16th guard Musgrave is in tenth. continues to lead this race. He is the sixth leader that we have had this afternoon. We'll take a break and be back with more. 55 laps have been completed out of 74 here at Sears Point. Just how long does a car battery last? About this much time is put into most batteries. But AC Delco puts in more time, so our batteries last. Engine protection. High-speed crashes are always cause for concern in Winston Tracy. Last week's accident involving Ricky Craven and others resulted in no serious injury to any driver, a testimony to NASCAR safety standards and car construction. After the incident, Jerry Punch examined Craven's car. That's the crumpled hulk of Ricky Craven's engine. What's left of it, I should say. The carburetor having been sheared away, some of the intake crushed, and the engine pushed completely to the left. But look at what's left of his beautiful Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Well, there's not much, of course. The roll cage, though, remained intact. This cage, built by Mike Laughlin, did its job. There were some openings here where it had been ripped open by the catch fence. Once again, the catch fence did its job, catching the race car, but it did rip open some of the bars on the cage. But look most importantly inside. The safety perimeter, the cockpit of the car, remained intact. It maintained its integrity. Now let's go to the back of the car. We'll show you the frame here. Remember, the car came off the fence. There were no wheels or tires. It came back on the racetrack and landed flush on the frame. And the back of the car, a safety feature NASCAR put into effect many years ago. The fuel cell remained intact somehow, and there was no risk of fire. Now let's look at the driver's side. What well, becomes readily apparent looking at the left side of the car is that the windshield bars have been cut in two so the safety crews could actually lift the roof back and extricate Ricky Craven quickly and safely. And they performed flawlessly. Now take a look at the outside on the left side of the car. The car actually came down on the asphalt, on the pavement itself. There is pavement ground into the B-pillar here, right behind the driver's seat. This is asphalt, folks, from Talladega Super Speedway. Take a look at the window net here. It did its job although it took quite a beating and was bowed when the car came off the fence and tumbled down on the racetrack. But most importantly, look inside the race car. You see this seat right here? In the back of the seat, it says Butler Bill, Energy Impact System. That's exactly what it did. The seat absorbed the energy. The roll cage kept Ricky Craven safe. And folks, Ricky Craven can walk away. He's very lucky. 
He's lucky because the sanctioning body has rules, and his race team, Charlie Presley, Larry Hedrick and company, they followed him to the letter. Back live now at Sears Point. When we went to commercial, this car was in the lead, and now it's on pit road, Bill. And Tommy Kendall has a transmission problem. They think he only has first and second gear. They give him a fresh drink of water. They're going to go ahead and change the right side tires. Mike Keen leans over the wall, talks to him on the radio, putting in the fuel. Now they come around to the left side. So maybe maybe he's gotten it fixed or it was just hung up. But they had said he only had first and second. Well, they got out jack stands now. So maybe they're going to go ahead and take a look underneath. Beam off the wall. They jack the car up high. Mike puts under the jack stand and he's going to take a look. So Tommy Kendall's rugged weekend continues here. His McDonald's board is a little banged up. He sits on pit road, and uh, we'll get an update for you. Race continues, guys. It's been a tough weekend for Tom. Of course, he uh, crashed his primary car during the practice session. This is the backup, and now the car is down. He loses a lap in 33rd position, but is going back into the race. We have our first car that is officially listed as out of competition. That was Mike Wallace. He came off turn 11 a moment ago and just like he was out of fuel or something and turned and went back to Gilligan's Island. He crossed the racetrack with those cars going by at 130 miles an hour. Wow. But fortunately, he picked the right spot. So he makes his way down pit road and back out onto the racetrack. Kendall substituting for Bill Elliott in the McDonald's board. Well, so what happened to Tom Kendall when he came down toward turn number 11? Here it is. He just goes to the corner, and all of a sudden, the car just stalls. Yep. And we see the 19 car go by, and Kendall trying to get out of everyone's way as the leader goes by. Jeff Gordon just turned right and parked over in Gilligan's Island. Bill Weber, what's the update? Hey, Benny, he does not have first or second. He only has third or fourth gear. What's that going to do for him around here? It's not going to do very much. He will not be able to get off the short, the slow turns, like 7 and 11, well at all. He needs second gear at those spots. There's Joe Nemechek's car, who we uh, saw up against the tire barrier, resulting in one of our three caution periods quite some time ago. He's back in the race, running 42nd. There is the leader for the first time here at Sears Point in his fourth race. The leader is the hometown hero, Jeff Gordon. Jeff lists his hometown as Pittsburgh, Indiana. He was neither born there nor does he reside there. He resides in Charlotte, born in Vallejo, California, down the road here. But because he grew up and cut most of his racing teeth in the Pittsburgh, Indiana area, that's where he is listed on all the information that you will see. There is our interval in leaderboard showing a 9.3 second distance between Gordon and Wally Dallenbach. And Mark Martin, you gotta take your hat off to him who uh, went to the back of the field for the start of the race. He's up to fourth and only a little less than seven seconds behind the leader. Mark Martin. Meanwhile, this is Rusty Wallace as he goes charging out towards you, Ned. He comes into the turn. We've had a report that he might be smoking a little bit, but I don't see any smoke as he comes through here. He might have got a wheel off or something or spun a wheel, but uh, he looked great coming through here. He smokes. It looks like he's smoking the tires on under heavy braking come down in turn 11 on the right side. If you're watching the left side of the car, I can't see it. I do see some smoke when he charges down in turn 11. He is coming, isn't he? He's trying his best to catch Jeff Gordon. Not had a lot of success doing it. Let's watch this time and see if that right front tire smokes. Now he didn't do it that time. As a matter of fact, Rusty Wallace made a very good corner that time. Ever see Terry Labonte? Third place car. There's fourth. Mark Martin goes by. And there's Dolan back. The fifth place car goes by. and West drivers. Thank there is Dallenbach. And behind him, Earnhardt and Rudd battle for the sixth spot. And Woodland got off course momentarily. Must have been scared when he saw that black three behind him, huh? That thing only intimidates you. And you know, 
for you Sterling Marlins fans. We've seen him racing up here in the top five most of the afternoon. Well, something has happened in this car. It looks like it might be a transmission problem. He's fallen out of the top ten and is working his way back. I saw uh, Dale Jurek is passing down turn 11 a moment ago. Turn six, coming toward you. He's going to try to make a run on him as he comes into turn seven. We'll see. Earnhardt slows down, goes to the inside. Going to give Rudd room on the outside. Rudd's going to try to go out there, but that inside is a preferred position here, so can't do nothing with it. to try to pass anyone, even a slower car. And yes, this is not a, good, not a good opportunity to pass there. Looking for our eighth place car, Ken Schrader. Here he comes. Schrader has had five straight top ten finishes here at Sears Point. Best was fourth in 93. Ted Mud, the car we see out the rear bumper of the trainer's car is Ted Musgrave. They're racing for the eighth spot. Sixty-one laps completed, thirteen to go. Jeff Gordon leads at Sears Point. With Rusty, Terry Labonte. Your top five. We'll take a break and be back with more from Sears Point Raceway in California and the Save Mark Supermarkets 300. Parts. We keep America running. 62 laps completed. Up front is Jeff Gordon. We ride with second place, Rusty Wallace. Labonte, Martin, and Dollenbach are the top five you can see on your scoring pie line. And man, are these cars evenly matched. I believe if Rusty Wallace is in front, Jeff Gordon would have a difficult time passing him. But all Rusty Wallace can do right now is just charge as hard as he can and hope he can make Jeff Gordon make some kind of mistake. Meanwhile, there's Jeff Crow right in front of those guys. And he is the last car on the lead lap. He's in 31st position. So when he gets past, it'll give us 30 on the lead lap. 29 cars finished on the lead lap here in 1995, a record for road courses. So even if Jeff gets lapped here, and he undoubtedly will momentarily, we're still on record pace for a number of cars on the lead lap of the road courses. Well, it's letting Rusty catch right up to Jeff Gordon. I thought he was gaining a little bit the last lap or two anyway. Now Gordon gets on the inside of the left car, and Rusty will go with him. But that has allowed him to move right up on him. Jeff Gordon finished third in both road course races last year. Oh, Rusty is in the corner! Oh! Wow, a rare mistake by Rusty Wallace. Man, he was trying to, he was going to fake to go to the outside and try to dive to the inside and just missed the corner. Oh, That's geez. the second mistake we've seen Rusty make. He's just trying too hard to catch Jeff Gordon. Here it is again. There we see he's going to try to dive to the inside and he gets in there too hard and just can't. And actually he might have had to slam on the brakes to keep from running the back of the 24 car. And we can see he gets out of shape and luckily did not go in the tire barrier. Wow. So that gives Jeff quite a cushion here. Yeah, that's going to be hard to make up, Bob. It looked like the rest was maybe making up a car limp a lap before he caught him there. He's, he's got a lot of making up to do. You're right. There are 10 laps to go, so even if he will make up a car link a lap here, he would come up a little bit short because that mistake has given Jeff a little bit of breathing room. 10 to go at Sears Point. Stay with us. Supermarkets 300 with less than 10 laps to go. Let's check on where some of our in-car competitors are running. Kyle Petty carrying the Briggs and Stratton in-car camera started eighth. Is currently 32nd. He stopped on lap 161 just four laps ago, so that's one of the reasons why he is back so far. And he makes 
contact with Derek Cope early on coming off turn 11. Ted Musgrave having a good race. He's got a top 10 finish going here in ninth. This is the prime star. Ruth Kim started 11th, currently in ninth position. Kenny Schrader is also among the top 10. He is in eighth spot, and oh, there is Jeff Crow into the nosed into the tire barrier. It looks like he had a problem with uh, Dave Marcus. Well, it would be good if he could fire that thing up and get off the tire so that the caution flag would not be waved. It sure would. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So as the full course caution comes out, that advantage that Jeff got a while ago when Rusty made the mistake is all he raced. We'll see. Here it is again. They go down in the corner, and yes, Dave Marcus just touches the back of Crow, and into the tire barrier he goes. Too many race cars for not enough racetrack. Looks that way. But Darrell Waltrip is fun. Wow. Waltrip was 23rd, loses some track positions. The yellow flag comes out. The caution is out for the fourth time. Now, this is going to make things interesting, huh? Oh, man. And Mark Martin is going to get by Terry Lamonte, so put Mark Martin in third place. Yeah. Well, a break for Rusty Wallace, among others. Now the field closes up, and we have a dash to the finish. And will they pit? That, yeah, that's a good question. And if they do for gas, they do for cops. Do you get up the track position, though? Some of them, some of them won't. Yeah. So, less than 10 laps from the finish, we have a caution flag that's going to bunch up the field. We'll be right back at Sears Point. Full course caution for the fourth time this afternoon here at Sears Point. Jeff Crow, off course, noses his car into the tire barrier, and that causes the field to be bunched up. Now, will they pit? They're going by the entrance to pit road. Who will go in? Rusty Wallace, is he trying to fake Gordon in there? Is Rusty Wallace going to pit? No, he stays on the racetrack. <laughs> Good bunch. Well, we're at Jeff Gordon's pit with Ray Everham and Ray, a tough situation. You, do you come in and get tires? But how do you give up track position? You obviously couldn't. No, you can't. Um, there's 28 cars on the lead lap here, and there's only probably about six laps to go when we get the green, and you just just can't do it. You know, we hated that caution to come out. We certainly didn't need that, but it's going to be probably a good show for the fans and the TV audience. Can he hold Rusty off? Well, I don't know. Rusty's awful tough here, but Jeff is probably driving uh, the road race of his life. He's doing a great job, and whether he holds him off or not, you know, it'll be the best uh, best job he's ever done on a road course. So either way, we, we got to give him a lot of credit. Hey, either way, these guys are pleased down here. Jeff Gordon trying to pick up his first ever win on a road course. But what a call, guys. No one pitted because, hey, you come in, you got 28 cars to pass when the green comes back out. Just a few moments ago, a change for third position as Mark Martin and Terry Labonte were behind Dave Marcus. Well, Labonte gets by. Here comes Mark going by on the outside. And up the hill. And look, Mark makes a sharp move to the right, moves right around Terry Labonte. Boy, he made that look easy. He did make it look easy up in turn four. So with the caution out and the car of Jeff Crow being gotten off the racetrack, we'll take another break and be right back to Sears Point. Welcome back to Sears Point. We'll be going to green in just a moment. First, a salute to the Western Auto Mechanic of the Race. That's a familiar guy. He's a crew chief now, of course, used to be a driver. He's the crew chief on Wally Dottenbach's car. That is Jimmy Means. Congratulations. You're the Western Auto Mechanic of the Race. Well, Jeff Gordon is in the lead as we get set to the back to green, and Jeff, with his lead here, has now led on all current NASCAR Winston Cup tracks. Here's a Napa field summary. Marlin back in 15th. He was running up in the top five at a brake problem. He just made, a, just made a pit stop just a couple of laps ago. And how many cars you say? 28 cars. 28, yep. Michael Waltrip, the Sitco car, the last car on the lead lap. 
Here's 31 through 44. Now, Jeff Crow is still the highest-running Winston West competitor. He's two laps down, whereas Gunzelman and Woodland are four and six laps down. Now through corner number 11, looking on to the main straightaway here as the pace car goes straight on the drag strip while the others accelerate to the green flag. with Jeff Gordon's car. Now uh, Mark Martin is challenging for second place. There's definitely some contact between, and there's contact, looks like, between Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon. Oh, man. Yeah, Gordon's car is not up to par right now. No doubt about that. Well, something's wrong. Look at this. Mark Martin going to second position. We have another crash. It's Ron Hornaday Jr. who has taken Ricky Craven's car into the tire barrier. You can see he's trying to get going again, but obviously is high-centered and cannot, and it could bring out another caution flag full course. If he doesn't get going, it definitely will. Meanwhile, you ever see Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin as Jeff Gordon is trying to drive on the outside, and that's done about 20th minute if that's in front of you. Yeah, and Gordon seems to have his car going a little bit better now. Up on the outside, he gets it sideways. Oh. Earnhardt now moves down to the inside of it. A lot of jockeying going on here. Turn seven. Boy, something just isn't right with Jeff Gordon's car, and he has fallen back. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. Stay tuned for all the news from the world of sports at the conclusion of our race. Well, we look now for another full course caution as the cars come around corner number 11. And yes, it is going to come out. The fifth full course caution of the day comes out. Oh, look at Ricky Rudd and Ken Schrader battle side by side. All and of the Henry cars run right together there. Field takes the caution. And Morgan Shepard is spun down in turn 11. He's sitting right in the middle of the racetrack, and so far, everyone has missed him. There's a, he, he's open. And there we see Ted Musgrave going to the pit. Looks Bill Weber. Happened right after the restart. The crew jumped to their feet, grabbed two tires. It's a flat right front. They're going to make a two-tire change on the right-hand side. They just put the fuel in for the heck of it. Now they're going to come around and do four. They were going to do two when the caution came out. They decided to do four. They're going to lose a lot of track position doing this. Hope the tires can help them make it back up when they get back out there. Ted was having a great run. Six the last two years here. He's going to have to battle his way back to the front in the closing laps. Bob. Wow, a tough break for Ted, who had a really good run going the track positions he can really lose here with the uh, flat tire. Now, let's take a look at what happened to bring out our most recent full course caution. Ron Hornaday is going to get in trouble here. Looks like he, looks like he might have gotten a bump from the Jeff Burton car. I don't know. It looked like Burton was the next car behind him. Look how everybody bunched up there trying to get around Jeff Gordon and all of a sudden, in the bottom of your frame, here comes Ron Hornaday Jr. sliding in and scattering tires everywhere. That's our robotic camera. That's, uh, that's the one that got taken out yesterday, isn't it? But it still worked. <laughs> Let's see what happened on the restart. There we see Elmo has pulled the safety car. And then, by the way, Elmo Langley is back. Yep. He's pulled the safety car away. Jeff Gordon gets a start and charges up the hill. And when they go out of the frame, he's still in front. But the next time we see the car, Jeff, Jerry Punch, what happened to Jeff Gordon? Ray Evernham said to Jeff, said, hey, guys, I apologize. I just spun the tires going up the hill. Apparently, it was a lot of buildup on the tires. As, uh, as Elmo Langley had commented on the pace car, said, I got so much buildup on the pace car tires, I can hardly turn the pace car. But Gordon apparently spun the tires going up the hill, and that cost him some valuable time. And next time we saw him, Rusty Wallace had made the pass. And uh, basically, uh, this caution may be a reprieve for the 24 car, but he's got a long way to go. You saw the brain trust there of Hendrick Racing, Ray Evernham, and Rick Hendrick both assessing the situation regarding uh, Jeff Gordon. And here, once again, we'll see them come up the hill, and we'll see Jeff Falter and Rusty pass. Well, he was right there to make that pass as soon as Jeff did bobble just a little bit. Rusty was right there and took the hole. He was Johnny on the spot, wasn't he? 
Sure was. Now we see those cars weaving back and forth, back and forth. That's exactly what they're trying to do is get rid of all the tire buildup they might have on the tires because these tires are hot and they're, they've got several laps on them and that buildup will stay on there. And the next time they go in the corner and turn the steering wheel, they just will not get the grip that they need. Gordon falls from first to fifth. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN, but we still have four more laps to go here in this race at Sears Point, the St. Mark Supermarket's 300. Rusty Wallace is your leader. Back at Sears Point, still under caution because of an incident involving Ron Hornaday Jr. We will look at the restart from the vantage point of Mark Martin who was running third and see how Jeff faltered and Rusty was there to pounce on the uh, problem. Okay, there where they're waiting for the green flag, the green flag. And Doyle Ford waves it, they accelerate. And watch Jeff Ford when he turns left. Rusty, we slipped up and Rusty Wallace just dove to the inside of the DuPont Chevrolet. Gordon had to wonder if maybe he had a tire going down at that point because the car got pretty squirrely with him there for a little bit. That's and a good point, Ned. He just might have thought he had a flat tire. Well, Jeff uh, was passed also by Martin, Dahlenbach, and Earnhardt, so Jeff is in fifth. Well, ever seen Mark Martin started dead last. He's worked his way up to second place. Had to pass a lot of race cars. He's awfully strong, but can he pass R Rusty Wallace in the few laps remaining? I believe Rusty would have to goop up again. We've seen him uh, make a couple of mistakes, but I believe, uh, I mean, he'll certainly be on his guard here right now. When he made those mistakes before, he was trying to catch up. Yeah, now exactly. he's out front. So exactly. I don't think we'll see Rusty Wallace make a mistake. That is exactly uh, my thought. He was trying to catch up when he made the mistake. Now he's up front. Look at the tight field come up the hill. Dale Earnhardt looking to the outside of Wally down and back for third place. They go into the corner. Oh, Earnhardt tried, couldn't get the job done. Lost a little ground, as a matter of fact. Up the hill, they continue to come. Here's Wallace, Martin, Dahlenbach running first, second, and third. Nose to tail. In fact, oh, there the car's spinning. Looks like Jimmy Spencer has got his car going again. This will not cause a caution. The car is moving again. And another wreck. Brett Bodine is involved. Who else? Jeff Burton, I believe. He's digging. He's digging. It's clear. They were running right together on the racetrack. Yep. It is Burton. They were going for 12th position. When they, and look at the mess they created. Yeah, that is Jeff Burton, and the Rick Mast also had to stop his car. But meanwhile, there comes the leaders, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, and Wally Dolan back. See so Earnhardt back in fourth place, and Jeff Gordon in fifth. Dolan got up beside of Martin in turn seven the last time by. He is racing. And they'll come down now and complete lap number 72. We'll have two more laps to go. Dolan back looks outside of Martin. Mark Martin moved over and he slides the car and Dahlenbach tries his best to get on the outside. Mark Martin took that spot away and not letting Dahlenbach outbreak him in the corner and Wally dove to the outside. And now Terry Labonte has moved into fifth position past Jeff Gordon. Dahlenbach continuing to hound Mark Martin was 27 seconds behind on lap number seven. Tries to hold off Wally Dahlenbach's challenge for and now Dahlenbach tried the inside and Mark blocked him. Man, oh man, and Earnhardt is there. Remember, Dahlenbach and Mark Martin used to be teammates for the Jack Roush car. Now Dahlenbach, man, they're coming to you. It looks like Coming on the outside of Dahlenbeck, coming into seven. 
Dahlenbeck will drive it deep in here. You can rest assured of that, but so will Earnhardt. Dahlenbeck now trying to get on the inside of Mark Martin. He has Earnhardt cleared. Ricky Rudd and Jeff Gordon side by side back there, but Gordon gets the best of that position. Man, oh man. Or the ships are down. Now's the time to go. Coming down this time for the white flag, Rusty Wallace. Well, down charge on turn 11 for the last, next to the last time. Down ship, there's Mark Martin right on his bumper. And Ricky Rudd trying to drive to the inside of Jeff Gordon. White flag is out. Flag. Four left to go. There's Ken Schrader, who is eight. Bobby Laponte is ninth. And Ward Burton is in tenth position. They come up the hill for the final time under competition. There's Jeff Gordon, who has Ricky Rudd all over him. Rusty Wallace continues to lead, but the advantage is less than a car length over Martin. Downhill they come now to corner number five, and then to number six. That's where Mark Martin got passed last year. He was hoping that he might return the favor to a different driver this year, but he didn't pass Rusty there. As he come out of turn six here now. Still Rusty out front as they hit into turn seven. Martin will try to outbreak him coming this turn, but Rusty has been driving hard coming into this turn. I think he'll be able to hold him off. And here comes Dolan back. He's moving in closer as well. Earnhardt down on the inside. No passes made here. There it is. They are going as hard as they can possibly go and keep that car going straight. Rusty Wallace, the two car. Mark Martin in the sixth. Molly Dolan back to 15. One, two, three. They charge towards me. Turn 11 one more time. It's going to have to happen here, Benny, if it's going to happen. Does Mark have anything for Rusty? He tries. He's hard on the inside. Now he comes off, tries to get to the inside. He can't make it. Rusty Wallace accelerates towards you, and I think the victory, Bob. Let's see if he can hold him off. It looks like he's going to. He pulls ahead. Rusty Wallace wins the Saymart Supermarkets 300, his second win of 1996, and his second here at Sears Point, his 43rd career win and sixth on a road course. He also gives Ford its third win of 1996. Rusty led 36 of the 74 laps. Mark Martin second, followed by Wally Dallenbach, Dale Earnhardt, and then the five car of Terry Labonte, who finished fifth. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, they just gave us a shower, but Robin Pemberton got most of the bath. Robin, congratulations. Uh, thanks. It was a great team effort. Uh, the pit crew did a great job as usual. They got us the spots when they needed to, and uh, Rusty did a great job getting a good jump on the restart back there, and uh, it was good. Good job, Steve. Good job, Mary. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Steve Mill coming by from the battle. How about that restart? Rusty Wallace was able to make the pass going uphill. They were snatching gears, I guess. Uh, it, was, it was just good. Good restart on him. He's been paying attention real good, so... What can I say? Huh? How about that? Robin Pemberton and the uh, Miller crew celebrating. They were just showering with ice water, which actually felt pretty good to hear, guys. They had the big play. Please stick around because we will have a post-race interview with the winner, Rusty Wallace. But coming up right after that will be Sports Center. Rusty's win ties him with Richard Petty and Bobby Allison for most ever wins on a road course. Back to talk with them in a moment. This weekend's winners here at Sears Point. Friday, Terry Labonte won the Bush Pole. Yesterday, Doug McCowan won the Pennzoil 200. He does not get credit. He does get credit for the win, but no points because he had an oversized engine. But today, Rusty Wallace drives the victory in the NASCAR Winston Cup race, the St. Mark Supermarkets 300. Rusty wins his first road course event since 1990 here at this facility. He's already arrived in victory lane, getting unstrapped and. Uh, Soon we'll be coming out of the car to talk with Dr. Jerry Punch. Once again, a reminder that Sports Center will be coming up in just a few moments, so stay with us as soon as we hear from the man who has driven to victory here this afternoon in the Northern California Hills. Rusty Wallace. 
Here's our McDonald's Winter Circle interview and Jerry Potts. Hey, R.W., how about that for a finish? Uh, tell us about that last restart where you took the lead going uphill, man. Oh, man, I just had to get ready, you know. I mean, the kid was running good. I was running him down just a little bit, and I got up on the lap car there, and uh, I come down the carousel, bounced the rear tires, and flat spot in the right front tire, and I just really screwed up. And when that caution flag came, I said, okay, no more mess-ups out right. So I got out there, smoked the tires a couple times, got all the junk off and got the tires real good and cleaned up. It went through it, and he left me about a foot, and I just drove it on in there, and... Uh, it was a neat win. I'd just like to thank all the guys, the team, uh, all the sponsors, Miller, uh, Ford Motor Company. It's finally got two wins this year. It feels great. Fleet with all the guys, you know, that come on board mobile. But uh, this was a real uh, dramatic race today. You know, I haven't won road races in a long time, but every year I've always run great. And finally, we got this. Got us a brand new car. We named this thing Killer. So, uh, race fans, can, we got a new one. It's called Killer. So, that'd be good. Well, he gained three spots in the points as Rusty Wallace takes his second win of the year. Robin. Let's go to Mark Martin standing by with Bill Weber. Yeah, here comes and what a day man. for Mark Martin. Qualified well, had to start in the back, then you came all the way to the front, almost to the very front. I don't know whether to be uh, happy or disappointed. You know, uh, disappointed we didn't win. Uh, I can't believe we got to second uh, from the back. There's a lot of good race cars and race teams, and I don't know how we did it. We had, had some good stuff, and... Uh, and I ran it hard. I you squeezed her to death. Uh, that thing's going to have to rest till this time next year, for sure. How do you do it, Mark? There's not much room to pass out there. A lot of traffic. You obviously had a great car. I don't know. I want to thank uh, Valvoline and Cummins and Gillette and Bosch, Ford, Goodyear, and all our supporters. I thought we was going to get a chance to brag them up a little bit today there. But uh, Rusty was in front, and he's a heck of a race car driver, and there wasn't much time. And, we were a little quicker, but there was nowhere to go around him, man. Okay, Mark Martin, second for the second year in a row here. Of course, he second here last year. He won at Watkins Glen, Bob. So Rusty wins. Mark is second. Wally Dahlenbach finishes third, his best of 96. Sports Center is coming up soon. Reggie Miller come back. The NHL playoffs and golf's close finishes among the stories to be covered. When Sports Center comes your way in a few moments, however, we've still got a little bit of business to conduct here at Sears Point. So come back, and we'll do that in just a moment. Back at the St. Mart Supermarkets 300 completed here at Sears Point Raceway. It is Rusty Wallace, the winner. Third place goes to Wally Dollenbach. Here's Bill. Hey, we did this at Watkins Glen. That was a second. This was a third, but that's still a great run for you. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Hess. First, I'd like to say hi to Jacob and Wyatt back home. We'll see him soon. And, uh, you know, we gave it everything we had. I abused the cars about as bad as you can abuse a race car today. And, and they gave me a car that held up. Um, we'll get one one of these days. We're not going to give up. But uh, it was fun racing with them today. There were two pretty good guys in front of you, too. There really were. You know, uh, right there at the end, and those uh, us three cars, Mark and Rusty and I, looked like we were really even. We were trying everything we could. But, uh, you know, I'm happy for the team, happy for Hayes Modem, and uh, we'll keep digging. We'll get one. He's smiling. Third place, Wally Dallenbach. Good run, his best finish of 1996. The crowd begins to file out. We have one more segment. We'll show you the finishers and the points when we come back. Here's a look at the unofficial results from the St. Mart Supermarkets 300. Here at Sears Point, Rusty wins. Mark second, Dollarback, Earnhardt, and Labonte, the top five. And guys, as we look down through the rest of the results, we will see that 27 cars finished on the lead lap. That's too shy of the record that was set here last year. Only one official DNF, that was Mike Wallace, and the highest placing uh, Winston West competitor was Jeff Crow in uh, 35th position. Well, certainly there was a lot of good racing going on out there, Bob, all afternoon long, and, and some drivers made some good strides there towards the end. I saw where Darrell Waltrip got back up there, what, in 14th place after yep. spinning out. I tell you, it never ceases to amaze me just how hard that these drivers can drive these cars and keep them together. Dahlenbach said he used his car up. He abused it. Folks, he did. He abused the sheet metal, the brakes, the transmission, the engine. <laughs> Everything was to abuse, but it was there at the end, and he did a great job. Here are the point standings now. The top five remain in the same order. Dale Jarrett is now 115 behind Dale Earnhardt. But the second five change quite a bit. Ricky Rudd uh, moves up one. Ray, uh, Rusty Wallace up three. Craven down two. Musgrave down one. And Ken Schrader moves up one position into the top ten. 350 points behind the leader, Dale Earnhardt.
Sports Center is coming up next on ESPN at the top of the hour on ESPN2. You can catch Kenny Main and RPM tonight with all the results from the world of motorsports, including Damon Hill's win in the Formula One race and uh, all the IndyCar news. So Rusty Wallace drives to victory here for the second time at Sears Point International Raceway for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, and Dr. Jerry Punch. I'm Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us from Sears Point International Raceway. So long, everyone.